Hi everyone, this is Brandon again with GDNTBasics.com. We're on the uh, video question line here, answering questions for all of our students. Uh, today's topic is circularity, the effects of rule number one. Uh, today's question uh, is the value of circularity's tolerance should be obtained by upper limit of diameter minus lower limit of diameter divided by two, shouldn't it? Uh, this question came from Amber. So on this, Amber, um, real quick, just uh, the simple answer on this is that it's, it is not that divided by two. Um, but I want to show you uh, exactly what the tolerance zone for circularity looks like uh, and how we come up with those values. Okay, so like I've done on a few of the other uh, responses, um, I've shown where this is located on our wall chart. Uh, oftentimes you will hear us refer to this as the wall chart, but if you look at the name up here, um, we actually call it the, the cheat sheet. Uh, but if you hear me say wall chart, that's what I'm referring to is this, this cheat sheet on here. Um, what I've done, <clears throat> excuse me, what I've done is I've shown where it's pulled out from, the, the actual circularity um, um, symbol here. So I've blown it up a little bit here on the left. So you can see it right here, circularity. Um, it's in that green uh, area there. Those are all the form controls. There is, um, there is only four, uh, but we show six, and that's because a couple of them here we have uh, when it's applied to a feature of size. So straightness and flatness, those can be applied to a feature of size. So we are showing those on there again because there's some different rules to those. Uh, but as far as the symbols go, there's only four there. Uh, so the way that we that is defined in the standard and what we show in our course is circularity is um, really it's it's how much a, a a shape or the part adheres to a perfect uh, circular shape. Uh, a lot of times this is called roundness by uh, people in the industry. Uh, in the ISO standard, it is roundness. Uh, but whether you call it roundness, circularity. Uh, it has the same meaning. Um, down here on the bottom, it says per ASME 14.5. Uh, um, all of these symbols down here at RF is at RFS. Um, and, and just to point that out, that's why flatness and straightness are back on there twice, because when applied to a feature of size, those can have the MMC modifier. So for circularity, it's, it's a 2D tolerance zone. Um, so um, when you're in the fundamentals course, in our fundamentals course, cylindricity is uh, three-dimensional. It's controlling circularity because circularity is the 2D control. Um, so for circularity, um, states down here after where it states where the, it's the 2D tolerance zone, um, it's, a, it's a 2D cross section. So across a cylindrical feature, it's any given uh, 2D cross section. So um, in, in each one of those cross sections are independent from the previous or the next. So when you're taking measurements for circularity, um, uh, you are taking uh, measurements on the 2D cross-section and then uh, moving over, taking another one. And uh, the previous, um, let, let's say that whatever your method is, um, the previous one cannot be compared to that next one. They are individual uh, 2D checks. Okay, so I wanted to pull this up here and, and show you um, what the tolerance zone looks like. And... I wanted to, I have this big blown up area here that's pulled right out of, out of our course, uh, but look up top here, we have a, a diameter here of 20 millimeters plus or minus 0 0.5. So we have a total tolerance of one millimeter. Um, so now what you were stating there, Amber, where you would take it and you, you had stated that you divide it by two, um, that's not the case because whatever is stated right here um, so whatever this value uh, is here with the tolerance, um, the tolerance is where we get the actual form error allowance. Uh, in this case, plus or minus 0.5, like I said. So we get a total of one. So looking at this image over here to the right, um, it states cir uh, total the circularity tolerance is one. Um, and the tolerance zone is shown. This is how we show it in our course. Um, it's also on that cheat sheet or wall chart, um, much smaller on there, a little easier to see on here, but um, the tolerance zone here is two circles. 
Um, now on here, it's it's saying 0 0.03 apart. Um, just uh, I took this right out of uh, of our actual course, um, but it's actually one. So forget what it says right here. Um, it's one uh, is the tolerance, which is what they're showing right here. And that's based off, like I said, that plus or minus uh, 0 0.5. So getting back to this and looking at the uh, illustration over here, get some of my scribble marks out of the way. So looking at these two green circles, um, it's, that is equivalent to the, the view above it on the two blue circles. Um, like I said, forget that 0.3. Uh, so we have uh, on the size tolerance, we have a total size tolerance of one millimeter. So therefore circularity error is one millimeter. Um, now show, uh, look at this here and see how they, they've shown where um, this, is, this is what we call lobing. Um, but look at where the 19.5 is. So that would be based off of um, this, looking at this value, that's the least material condition there. This is an external feature, it's a pen. So that's the LMC, but the 20.5, if we add in the 0.5 here to the to the nominal value, um, that's the MMC. Um, remember, according to rule number one, um, at maximum material condition, we have to have uh, uh, perfect straightness, perfect form. Um, now, one thing that everybody thinks is that if it comes in uh, like this right here, if if we had uh, an area out here that was at MMC, MMC here at MMC, that this couldn't happen because of that statement of perfect form at MMC. Well, the perfect form in this case at maximum material condition, if we did have these circularity errors of one millimeter um, here, here and here, um, it does not have to have perfect form on circularity, um, but it does on straightness. So looking at the diameter here, we couldn't, we couldn't be bowed if it, if it had those maximum material conditions, because uh, in some areas here, we would be outside of that envelope. Remember, the envelope is the maximum material condition according to rule number one, um, the MMC. So the envelope of 20.5, if you um, imagine in your head that we have this gauge uh, with a bore of 20.5, we could have all of this circularity error here um, that they're showing on this image that I've scribbled all over. We could have all of that error in circularity, um, but still fit inside of that gauge, right? That's not going to affect it from fitting in the gauge. And in our course, we show um, the way that you do all of these checks and do the inspections. We have the two-point measurements that we check for LMC. So we take a pair of micrometers and we go around this diameter um, and we're checking to make sure that we don't have any measurements less than 19.5 or our LMC condition. Uh, remember, up here, we always have to meet those sizes no matter what. So we can never violate those. The LMC is 19.5, so therefore, no two-point measurement across uh, anywhere uh, down the length of the shaft or pen um, can be smaller than 19.5. Um, but then once we've verified that, um, and, and uh, the person inspecting is also going to be checking for maximum material condition for that 20.5. If they did see something, uh, if they've got a reading of 20.6, the part is scrap. Um, it's not going to be accepted at that point. 20.6 will violate the actual uh, envelope principle. It's also out of the size limit, um, but it's not going to go into that gauge uh, at that point. But if all of our measurements are between 19.5 and 20.5, uh, then we take it, uh, we stick it inside of that gauge. Um, that gauge will not be checking for circularity. That's not what these gauges do. Those envelope gauges there are not going to be checking for the circularity in this case using that type of gauge. But what it, what it is going to do is check the form or the straightness um, down the length of it. And it will be validating that the maximum material condition has not been violated. Uh, because it should insert into the pin uh, and pass, or the gauge, um, it'll pass through. Um, it states in, uh, there, there's a rule about that, that um, it can be passed through with, with a minimal amount of force. Um, obviously, we can't use any hammers and pins and anything like that to drive it through. Uh, it would have to be within reasonable force, meaning slight pressure from your finger pushing it through. 
Um, it shouldn't be galling or anything like that inside of the gauge. If it passes through, you have a good part. So um, just remember that whatever this tolerance is here, that, um, that, that size tolerance, the total size tolerance, um, if there is no refinement on here of circularity, which this one isn't, rule number one is controlling all of the form error. Um, that size tolerance is controlling circularity as well. So um, it's not divided by two. Um, that is the total allowance, um, like I said, so one millimeter out here, and that's at any given point all the way around here. Um, but remember, we can never violate um, MMC or LMC, uh, but we don't divide it by two. It's the total tolerance um, allowed on there. Okay, guys, uh, that's, uh, that's it for today for, for circularity. Um, keep an eye out for all of our uh, new releases in the weeks coming. Uh, we're going to continue to answer these, uh, these questions on videos. Uh, we find that it's uh, very helpful for everybody. Um, just having somebody sit here and, and talk through it with a, with a pen. Uh, we don't do the best uh, animations and graphics here, but um, we try to get the point across as quickly as we can and efficiently. Uh, so stay tuned, guys. I appreciate you joining today and uh, listening to this. Uh, everybody have a good day. Thank you.